All right, so in this video, I'm first going to talk about making things random, and then I'm going to talk about sorting things. Now, we've previously generated sequences and uh, lists um, using things like the range and series command. But there is also a random command with which we can create lists of a random numbers or pseudo random, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So what does this uh, command have? It's got three inputs. It takes a range, so we can create a domain. And for this, I'm just going to keep it from zero to one. And a number of values we want to have created. So let's say we want to have six values created. And then a seed, and we'll get into that in a second. Now, right now, you can see that it's creating random numbers somewhere between zero and one. Now, the problem with computers is that they're not inherently random. So if a computer needs a random number, you either have to somehow hook it up to a decaying radioisotope or uh, um, take an antenna and use some radio static from the atmosphere to create truly random numbers. But if we are happy with not perfect or actual real randomness, um, then we can use pseudo-random numbers. And the way that works is that there's an equation which takes a start value, does some calculation, and spits out a number, and then takes that number as the next start value, and then creates another number from that, and so forth and so forth. And this means that for a given start number, it will always create the same set of pseudo-random numbers. And this is called the seed, and this is this second value. So... If I actually go and copy this, you can see that because they both have the same seed, we get the same list of random numbers in the same order. Right? And this seed is 2. But as soon as I change this seed, we get a different set of random numbers. So that's something to keep in mind if you're generating multiple lists of random numbers. You need to think, do I need to have different random numbers? And that would then mean you need to change the seed. Or if you're not happy with what the random numbers cause to happen in your program, you might try just, you know, scrolling through different seed values and seeing what the gods of randomness um, give you. All right, so that's a way to create randomness in Grasshopper. Let's see how we can sort these. So let's say we want to sort these numbers um, by size. Well, there's a sort command, of course, sort list. And the sort list command has got two inputs and two outputs, K and A. And these are the keys and the values. So what does that mean? Well, if we sort something, we need to sort it according to something else. So let's say you've got a bunch of entries in your address book. These would be the values you want to sort. And then you can decide what you want to sort them by. So do you want to sort them by first name or last name? Do you maybe want to uh, sort them by country or age? And these would then be your keys. So in this case, actually, the keys, what we want to sort by and what we want to have sorted is exactly the same thing. So all we need to do is plug in this to the keys, and then we get out a sorted list. So that's how you can sort um, the, the keys of something. And if you then want to sort the, the values, something else. Let's say we've got a, a, a second list of numbers. So let's say I've got a, a range. Or let's know, let's create a series. All right, and I'm going to create a series with six numbers. All right? Here we go. Oh dear, I plugged it into the this I plugged it into the step size. So let's disconnect that and connect it into the count. All right. Now we've got two sets of numbers, our random numbers and our series of numbers. So let's say I want to sort this according to the way these were sorted. Then 
I could plug that into the values and out comes this. So essentially, by creating a bunch of random numbers and then sorting them and using the way this was sorted um, to sort a list of sorted numbers, we've essentially shuffled these numbers around. And if that's all you want to do, if that's all you want to do, you want to shuffle this, uh, uh, items on a list, there's actually a dedicated command for that, and it's called Jitter. And Jitter simply takes a list and a shuffling strength, so it goes from zero, which is no shuffling, to one, a complete shuffle. And then, once again, this also takes a random seed. So if we just take this in here, we could actually um, jumble these around and if we change the amount of jitteriness, the shuffling strength, we can go from zero, a sorted list, to a slightly muddled list. So you can see that the one, zero and two stayed at the top and the four, three and five stayed at the bottom with just a little bit of jitter to a fully randomized list. Okay, so that was Jitter and how to sort uh, numbers. Let's sort some geometry. So what I'm going to do, actually we can get rid of all this, and I'm going to draw myself a few circles. So circle, I'm going to have one circle, and then I'm going to have another one somewhere above it with a different radius and another one even higher, an even different radius, and another one up here. Okay, and maybe just one last one. Okay, so let's put all of these into Grasshopper and I'm simply going to do set multiple curves select all of them, and I'm not going to be careful about which order I added them to Grasshopper, and I'm going to do a loft and just see what happens. And actually, we got very lucky. See, they're in the right order. So, but that is not guaranteed. It might be that they are in different order. Um, let's say I drag this one down a little bit and maybe put this one on top. Now, this is not the shape we want to have. We want to have actually this set of circles. We want to have it sorted in the Z direction. Right? So we've got a bunch of circles and we want to put them into this loft starting from the bottom going to the top. So how do we do that? Well, we can sort them according to their Z value. And for this we can um, use the area command and then we'll get the area of these circles, but more importantly we'll actually get the centroid of the circle. And if we take that centroid and then deconstruct that point into its x, y, and z value, we can get at the individual z values. And you can see that they're not in order. And what we can then do is use our sort command, and what we're going to do is the key is going to be the Z value. So once again, let's just have a look at that. We can see that we now have those Z values sorted from 0 to 45. And we're going to use the Z as the key and the values we're going to sort are going to be the curves. And then we're going to plug the sorted curves into our loft and once again they're in the right order and if I now change this and actually drag this one down below here again it'll actually change the order of those curves and we'll still have a clean loft through all of those circles now we don't um, we there's actually a second sort command which we can use here and that is sort along a curve so instead of getting our points, deconstructing them, and then sorting according to Z value, let's go ahead 
and use the sort along curve. And for that, I need a curve to sort along. So let's name this. These are going to be, this is our collection of circles. And I'm now going to draw a curve. So let's go back to the front. Zoom out a little bit. I'm simply going to grab something, start from here, and go upwards. That was one click too many. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be the curve we want to sort, a length, uh, sort along. And get it into Grasshopper, set one curve. And now the we still need points, right? So we can't we still can't directly sort our circles. So we once again need our area command and then plug these points, the centroids into this long curve sort, and then our curve, or in this case our polyline along which we're going to sort, goes in here. And what happens is that we now have sorted the points. So you can see their z values are constantly rising. But how do we now get our circles sorted? Well, the along curve command gives us a bunch of indices. And we can now use these to sort the, the circles. So by taking our sort list and plugging in the generated indices into the sort, then these indices are sorted. And if we then take our circles, plug them into the values, and plug them into the loft, we once again get the correct shape. So what exactly is happening here? Well, we've, we've sorted the points along the curve, and the original indices of these curves, so if we look at the original, we've got these, um, we've got these points, and so what's happened here is that zero stayed at the same place, but for example, the, the last two had to change, so four and three needed to change. And if we then take these um, indices of the sorted points and sort the actual indices, it means that, on the other hand, these two get switched around again. And uh, we can use the generated indices as the key for the sort of our circles. So that's two ways to sort items in Grasshopper, namely once the sort along curve and then the sort using keys. And I also showed you how to use random and how to use jitter. Thank you for watching.